Bjorn, Bjorn, Bjorn. Yeah. Caddy bitch. Ooh, jeez. You scared me. Didn't see a... Uh, uh, walk in. How you doing? I was uh, just here. I was uh, catching up on some reading. Uh, but I was about to get to work. Um, I'm putting out an album in a couple of weeks. Hopefully. <laughs> Maybe a month. Um, but anyway, it's a collection of old stuff, old recordings from 2009 to 2012. Um, this song that we're going to listen to and work on tonight is called Rewards Out, and that was recorded on a Tascam DP08, I believe is what it was called. It was my first um, digital recorder, my first foray into digital recording. Um, so anyway, the, the collection of songs I'm putting out are all old recordings and, uh, I want them to kind of sound a little bit more uniform together. Like they belong, you know, in one group instead of all, you know, because there was different recording. I, I did some on cassette. I did some digitally. I did some, you know, where the mic was over gained. Some didn't have enough gain. A lot of rookie mistakes I was making, uh, I was still learning back then. I didn't know everything as I do now, of course, um, back then. But but seriously, let's uh, let's get to this. I'm going to be using an Audio Technica RMX64 as my summing box mixer, whatever you want to call it. And let's jump into that. Show you a little bit about that machine. Okay, let's do this. Come on, come on, go. Let's go. Let's do this. Jesus Christ. All right, and here is the Audio Technica RMX 64. Um, the only four track that Audio Technica ever made, ever released um, back in the mid 80s. I believe it sold for something like eleven, twelve hundred dollars which for 1985 was insane money to be spending on a cassette four track. But, you know, times be tough. So, this is a, a really cool machine. Um, I don't use it so much for the cassette portion which I have recorded on this, but I use it more for its mic pre and its <clears throat> EQ. This channel strip is really, really nice. Um, I believe this was designed by the guy from Neotech. That's a rumor, not substantiated, but I think it's true. I've heard it more than once, and these do resemble Neotechs from that era, so... Anyway, um, we're going to be going out of logic, out of channels 3 and 4, sending a stereo signal into 3 and 4 here on the Audio Technica. And then we're going to be going out of it again, right out of the top here, into channels 9 and 10 on my Tascam interface. That correspond to that channel right here that says from MXR. If this phone was actually in focus, you'd be able to read that. MXR is a bre my abbreviation for mixer. It's clever. I'm a clever person. So yeah, let's get into it a little bit more and let's work this machine like it should be worked. So here you see the tail end of the session file, all the tracks. What I did is I created a bus, and it's bus 13, which is right here. And I had all my other tracks, bus, they route to bus 13. And bus 13 goes from outputs 3 and 4, and that's what goes into the mixing board, into the Audio Technica, and then out of the Audio Technica. See this from mixer? That's inputs 9 and 10. It's going into input 9 and 10. If I just pan down a little bit, you see them. There they are. Input 9 and 10, you can see them. Beautiful, huh? So from input 9 and 10, it goes right here. And you'll see that is routed to the stereo out, which are the speakers. So it's coming out of here, going through everything, coming back into here. 
and then out the speakers. Very simple. Okay, so quickly, I'm gonna um, have the song play from the bridge into the chorus and then a little bit of the solo because that's the loudest part of the song. When I recorded this song, um, I had no idea what compression was. I didn't use any during the recording, so I didn't really even use much when I was mixing it I, either. So the session doesn't really have much compression on there, just a little bit on the, um, the main um, stereo bus. But anyway, um, I did a lot of room tone and stuff like that. I, I had access to large rooms with no furniture and, and, and tiles and, and cement walls. So I have a lot of natural reverb. Um, and I thought that that was a good thing to record all my guitars in this empty room. So the song came out, a lot of, there was a lot of boominess in it. So the meter uh, spikes. So it's tough to keep this thing under zero which I want to do because I don't want to add any sort of grit I don't want any distortion to the to the um, to the final track of course um, sometimes you do want that sometimes you want to run drums or something through the channel strip and jack the hell out of the mic pre's and, and have this wild crazy you know dirty drum sound but for this track as you'll hear it's it's a more of a mellow um, kind of thing here so Enough talking, I'll just show you. Not much, uh, you don't hear any sort of distortion or anything like that. Um, this VU meters on your mixer, obviously, it's gonna give you an average. Uh, you're, it's not, you're not, obviously not seeing where the sound peaks. You're only getting an average reading, so you don't wanna get too high up there if you can help it. Like I said, when, when possible. <laughs> if you do want dirt, then by all means get dirt, but you get the point. Um, but anyway, I'll go through the whole channel strip. I'll add a little bit of EQ. In this case, this mixer is um, is a really nice mixer, by the way. Um, and the EQ section is really it's versatile and it's really nice. It sounds great. Um, you can go from peak to shelving if you pull it out. So I usually it, it only goes up to 10k for the highest. This is, again, this is a, it was built for cassette, but. I'll go out up to 10 and I'll put about a dB, a little bit of uh, on, on the shelf, so I just give a little bit of high end boost. And then for this song, I took off another one or two dBs around 340, 350 hertz. I'm get rid of some of that boxy sound that I told you I got from the room. After that, it comes out of the top of the machine again, and then it goes into 9 and 10 on my interface. These correspond to this track here, which is inputs 9 and 10, and then stereo out. From 9 and 10, it goes to the speakers. So what happens is I can go and I can, let's go back to here. I can record, and it'll actually record in real time. You can see happening right now. I'm not lying, right? So, um, that's that. Not, not very exciting, I'll admit it. But it does kind of have a cool sound to it. And I'm gonna put, uh, uh, I'm gonna put two examples at the end. I'm gonna do one with out. I'm just gonna bounce this down. Then I'm gonna do another where it's gone through the channels and gotten a little bit of EQ magic and all that BS, so. So yeah, the whole point of, that I'm trying to make here is that I don't have a lot of uh, expensive stuff. I don't have like a really expensive mic pre. 
I don't have, you know, really nice vintage tube mics or ribbon mics or anything like that. Um, but I use what I have however I can uh, to make it sound the best it can, that I think it can be. Um, and sometimes the best meaning the best, not necessarily sonically, but the best, it, it, how it sounds in my head, you know, how it, how it sounds when I'm listening to it and I say, yeah, that's actually, that's what I wanted. That's what I was hearing before. And sometimes um, it's, it's comes from using something like this. Sometimes it comes from like routing something through uh, or recording something into a, a cheap boom box and miking that and putting that back in, uh, you know, putting a vocal through that or something like that. Using whatever you have um, at your disposal. Um, in my case right now, this, this machine here uh, is like a godsend to me because I don't, like I said, I don't have a very nice mic pre. And, and these are very, these are, you know, borderline professional grade mic pre's. Um, the EQ too, it's like a really nice EQ. I don't have any other analog EQ. I have a Fox Dex mixer, but it's, um, I mean, it's terrible. <laughs> it's coming from me, it's bad. Uh, but even that has its place, you know. I use that when I'm when I'm sometimes using the, my uh, reel to reel eight track because it's the one that was made for it. Uh, but just using whatever you have and using it to uh, you know make make your songs sound like how you want them to go. Fuck how you know what anyone else says about it. If you think it sounds right, it sounds right. That's that's my rule. And that's my only rule. I think. And that's actually, actually a lie that I have way more rules, but that's my only rule for this episode. Okay, thanks for watching, and um, check out the two songs. I'm going to compare them right now. <laughs>